Yeah, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. Okay, see, people, I react to things that I'm interested in, things that I like, things that make me go, wow, awesome. You know, that's what YouTube is about. If I start reacting to things that only get me click views and views and whatnot, it won't be sincere. I won't feel okay with it. So, what I want to react to, Camelonia, every day. Wait, what's Camelonia? I can't remember it again. Okay. Okay, we bad people. So, I want to write to Camelonia. Love the guy's songs. I'm trying to remember one of his songs. Oh, seriously? <sighs> this is weird. Okay, yeah, but it was a kind of one hit wonder. Huh? That's what they have to say about the guy. One hit wonder is a term often used to insult. <laughs> one hit wonder. Even though nothing really defines a hit, it's used to insult. Like, so yeah, boy. Only very popular <laughs> yeah, don't or maybe billboard charting song. I guess if someone is actively pursuing music, this is an insult basically saying they've already peaked and they won't ever outdo themselves, yeah. which is a pretty harsh burn. Yeah, but what about sure. someone who recognizes that they are a one-hit wonder and doesn't try to outdo their previous work? Yep. What about someone who embraces change and moves into a totally new career and becomes even more successful than their one hit? Today we are talking about Chameleonaire, a rapper who had one mainstream hit song, Riding Dirty, <laughs> which gave him enough fame and- Woo! I remember. Got to got me riding dirty. They keep you going. That got me riding dirty. That got me riding dirty. That got me riding dirty. Woo! Fortune to escape music forever and move on into a new career where he would generate tens, potentially hundreds of millions of dollars. Look at all the jewelry, all the clothes, all the brand new cars, all the fancy houses. It seems like the general understanding of rappers is that they are filthy rich. Even your average upcoming rapper is probably flashing cash and flexing their lifestyle that they probably don't live. <laughs> Most rappers are not as rich as they portray themselves to be. Fake it till you make it, they say. Yeah. It's rare that these artists can amass tens of millions of dollars just based on their music. Why? In short, the music business is designed to get labels more rich, not the artists. Oh, yeah. It's often where rappers sign terrible contracts. Do not own the- Yeah, this is true, right? The music industry is designed to get labels rich, not the rappers. And who are the owners of white people are the owners of most of these music labels industries? I don't know who they are, but like from Universal to Warner Brother to Atlantic to like they are all owned by white people and controlled by white people. And yet, yet the product is hip hop, right? Majorly hip hop now because hip hop is the most dominant music genre in the world right now. So the product is hip hop, and these hip hop artists are majorly who black. So is this another form of selling to the world? I have no idea because it just sounds weird. The major, instead with the NBA, instead with the sports franchise, they are owned by white people, but dominated, and end the money end the profit and everything are created by the black people. Well, the creations and only make around 20% of the revenue that it generates. Chameleonaire saw the trap. He experienced what it was like to have a label take advantage of an artist. One time he even learned the label was hiding $600,000 from him. But the funny <laughs> thing about it is, he never started music to get rich. I know it's hard to believe that a rapper named Chameleonaire isn't all about money, but his name is inspired by him relating to chameleons. Hakeem Sariki was an introverted guy who was very curious and very observant. While attending Jersey Village High School in Houston, Texas in the mid-90s, he watched kids at school freestyling at lunch. He sat back for weeks watching. What made the crowd react? He thought he could do it better than them. He recognized that people would go crazy when you rapped about someone's hat or shirt, so that they all knew you just thought of the line off the top of your head. You the poster boy for acne cream. <laughs> so he practiced freestyling off the top of his head to gain respect from his peers. One of those peers was Paul Wall. They grew up on the same street, knowing each other since they were two <laughs> They both video. attended Jersey Village High School, and Chameleonaire always looked up to Paul. He was charismatic, someone everyone wanted to be friends with. But Cam was more of a background guy. He liked to blend in and observe. They started a group together called the Sleepwalkers. After high school and a bit more experience in the Houston, Texas rap scene, 
they rebranded as the color changing click. They had no management. Paul was the friendly guy who made relationships and Cam was the hard headed businessman. They thought themselves to be kind of like a good cop, bad cop, or Cam was the bad cop. They would book their own shows, sometimes doing them for free, just to get their name out there. They recorded mixtapes and printed CDs all by themselves with their own money and would drive city to city selling them. Cam even had a website in 2002 where he would sell merch, his own CDs, his friends' mixtapes. He had a Whoa. mailing list that people could join. In 2002, he had his own... Come on, bro, this guy is innovative. This guy is crazy, man. In 2002, he was doing the website stuff. Whoa. Hats up, man. Respect, respect. Oh, yeah, sorry. I realized something recently. My videos don't really trend or don't go that far or don't get views or whatnot. I don't know. Someone told me something based on the YouTube algorithm that they are dumbing down my videos. Still don't know. Is it true? I have no idea. Well, I'm not doing this YouTube something to get views. I'm just doing it for fun. So maybe it's a go, maybe it's a blow. Who knows? Let's just keep watching. And even his phone number just posted out there. He knew the value of the internet way before every other rapper. <laughs> Here's Cam in 2012 breaking down the intricacies of his old website. Okay, I'm gonna make a vault on my website, right? And in the vault, we're gonna have a leaderboard. So all of these fans are gonna do actions for me. I, I kind of use the, the military theme. You know, my company is called Camilitary. So we started uh, doing levels and badges. Like, you know, you could become a sergeant, a general, and all these different levels in the Camilitary. So now these fans have bragging rights. So look, this is some of the stuff I started putting up in the award center. I put up a mixtape myself. A plaque. This is one of my mixtapes. I went and made a plaque for it. I've got the uh, original painting from uh, my, my second album. I've got the jacket I wore in the Riding Dirty video. Oh, this not NFT. <laughs> this are like NFTs without the non fungible aspect, right? These are like NFTs talking about the non fungible aspect. Ha <laughs> ha, beautiful. <laughs> Man, this guy, how the fit guy? This Camilo is, is, is he into NFTs? I would like to know. I'll check our research it later. The reward actually gets sent to the fan. The fan sends me the picture. I upload the picture for everybody and he brags to everybody like, ha look at me with the plaque. The independent grind was rare at a time where most aspiring artists were focusing on getting noticed by a record label or another pop and rapper. But all the major labels were based in New York or LA. So in Houston, Texas, they had to make their own way. Little by little, city after city, Cam watched his fan base grow in front of his eyes. All that grind, losing money for years, paid off in 2002 with the release of their first album, Get Your Mind Correct, which sold over 150,000 copies and was nominated by The Source as Independent Album of the Year. This album is a Texas classic and brought the duo to new heights. Unfortunately, all this grind and success just brought more animosity between the two. Sure, they each had yeah. different ideas for how to continue their careers, so they decided to part ways. Paul went back to the legendary Swisher House label and collective, whereas Chameleonaire focused on being his own boss and building a solo name. He released his legendary mixtape Messiah in 2004, which was a three disc record with 60 songs. This went on to sell 40,000 copies independently. He started his MySpace page in 2004 and had millions of page views. At this point, he had a forum on chameleonaire.com with 34,000 registered users. Ooh. People would just go on here and chat about anything, like a private social media site. He had an email list with tens of thousands of fans who he could directly market his mixtape to. Not only was he willing to do the real life grind of handing out mixtapes, but he also understood the value of social media and connecting with his fans online before it was normal. He started a custom car shop called Fly Rides. Most rappers are not buying the cars you see in their videos. They rent them for one day for thousands of dollars. Cam had tons of connections to rappers who needed cars, <laughs> so he bought a bunch of them, customized them Texas style, and rented them to his rapper friends. Or if they wanted to splurge and buy one, he would be the guy they would go to to customize their rides. He started a modeling yeah. agency called Masterpiece Mindframe, where he would get hip hop video girls consistent work in the industry. And he started the Victory Tour Bus, where he would buy luxury tour buses with internet, cable televisions, showers, and rent them. Damn, this guy just sounds like something at a time. Like, whoo! Come on, man. The more I'm listening to this guy, the more I'm like, whoa. How come I didn't really know this? Okay, fact. I knew some things about him that is into the social media, like into tech. After he did the music scene, he, he, like he dove into tech. That was the only thing I knew about him. But now I'm learning things that even before he blew up, he was into all this. Man. Like, this is crazy, man. This is crazy. Oh, yeah. I hardly say this anymore, but just hit the bell button if you don't want to subscribe for new videos. I'm dropping more videos after this. Like, I'm going to do the Mr. Big's reaction video. 
Okay. And I was... Okay, let's just continue. ...to his artist friends when they needed to hit the road. Cam was making big independent moves, but he knew he needed a major label if he wanted to have a monumental impact on hip-hop. He started his own label, Camilitary Entertainment, and landed a joint venture with Universal Records. A joint venture was one of the hardest partnerships no, to I'm not for it. Because he already sold 100,000 records independently, he had leverage. Plus, he visited literally every single oh, other okay. label and told them that he was comfortable with leaving without getting a deal. So Universal had no choice but to give him a good deal. At that time, most rappers signed royalty deals for a lump sum. Let's say 500,000, with an 80-20 split favoring the label. But that Whoa. sum is a loan, so they have to pay it back. The label would typically own the masters as well. Once a song or album generates 500 grand, which in 2004 would be around 38,000 sales, with the average album cost being $13, the artist is no longer in debt, but will only earn 20% of the revenue. However, typically with a JV, you and the label are 50-50 partners. The label doesn't give you an advance unless you want it, but they spend all the money for producing, mixing, and marketing the album. Basically, they take all the financial risk and split the reward in half with the artist. Chameleonaire's first album, The Sound of Revenge, released in 2005 and sold 800,000 copies in its first two weeks. If they sold it at an average of $13, that's $10.4 million. If the album cost $1 million to make, which is very possible considering the wide variety of producers and features on the project, he still would have generated $4.7 million in two weeks. By the end of 2005, The Sound of Revenge secured 1.5 million copies sold, but the single from the album, Raiden, would go on to change his life. Raiden debuted at number 88 on the Billboard Hot 100 February 26, 2006, which was eight weeks after the Crazy album and slowly the climbed higher and higher on the charts until June 28th. Four months later, it peaked at number one and stayed there for two weeks in a row. The song sold 3.2 million ringtones, making him the first multi-platinum master tone artist in history. Yes, before Soldier Boy. He won the Grammy Award for Best Rap. So don't go, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? And then you always claim to be the innovator the, the number one. But this just proves what? <laughs> okay, so that boy is still the, you know, the... <laughs> okay, the innovator for many of all these songs, songs but come on, Carolina did this too. So, pay homage to where homage is due or give Caesar what Caesar is due, right? Man, I've got to read the Bible more performance by a duo or group. Even Weird Al Yankovic's parody of his song, White and Nerdy, peaked at number 9 on the Billboard Hot 100 and was Al's first platinum record. It's safe to say that Raiden was the hottest rap song of 2006. It was a hit. Nigga that just in the game to get some money, man, and, and that's my story, man. You know, I want to get my family out of poverty and, 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 you know, watch my family living good, and I did that, and people respect that, so. Cam's mission was very clear, get some money and get his family out of poverty. He made millions of dollars from riding in his album because of his joint venture. His deal was so good, he probably made more money off this song and album than most artists do in their whole careers. There was no rush to keep dropping music. He did mixtapes for the passion and to keep his relevance, but his eyes were set on something much bigger. His sophomore album, Ultimate Victory, went gold. He had a couple singles that did well, but nothing near the level of Raiden. Like I said, he didn't need to work as hard selling records because he made more money from a gold record than someone who went two or three times platinum. But for the next few years, he just did whatever he wanted creatively. He stayed in touch with his fan base through MySpace, Ustream, Twitter. Most people give Soldier Boy the credit for being the internet rapper, but Cam was way ahead of Soldier Boy. He just didn't brag about it. He tried to educate his people. Thank you. He just didn't brag about it. He just did his thing. But Soldier Boy will not let you forget it. Everywhere he's talking about it. Yeah, I heard he released a messed up game. Come on, is it true? Soldier Boy released a console, like one Chinese-made crappy console. Like that is seriously. Out of everything you are going to release is a console by yourself without partnering with Sony or something. They thought he was annoying. He tried to teach them some game. Stay out of the club. Stop wasting your money on your image. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have to go back. I have to go back. He just doesn't brag about it. Cam tried to educate his peers, but they thought he was annoying. He tried to teach them some game. 
Stay out of the club. Stop wasting your money on your image. They didn't want to hear what he had to say. It was like when your dad turns everything into a life lesson. He was having trouble with Universal. They forced him to put out his ultimate victory record as a censored version with no curse words so that Best Buy and Walmart would give him preferential treatment and put his album in front of 50 Cent and Kanye's. He lied to the public and said he wanted to do a clean record, but he was just obeying the label's commands. He's a few years removed from Raiden, and they want him to make millions for them again. Venom was supposed to be his third studio album to release in 2009, but the label kept trying to make creative changes, which kept pushing back the release. He was fed up with the music industry. When I got in before, I used to think it was just gonna be like, you know, fun and having fun outside of actual recording. Like, it's the person that understands business that's the most successful. This was Cam's mindset in 2009. He started attending tech conferences because he was a real life example of using technology to make millions. He sat in the back rows, blending into the crowd like a chameleon, listening, observing. As more time went on, he made connections. Eventually, he got to be a speaker at a conference in LA to talk about how he used social media to advance his music career. One of the tools he used was Say Now. Say Now was a service where artists and celebrities could give out a phone number to their fans and the fans could call or text the artist. Soldier Boy famously put his Say Now number in the song Kiss Me Through the Phone. Chameleon Air would connect the Say Now executives with the rappers that they wanted to work with. He was so valuable to Say Now that they gave him a little percent ownership in the company. Cam was shocked. Ownership? After the company sold to Google for quote, tens of millions of dollars, Cam knew his future was not in music. At that tech conference, he caught the attention of Mark Suster. Mark is an American entrepreneur and venture capitalist. He is a managing partner at Upfront Ventures, which is the largest venture capital firm in Los Angeles. Mark took him under his wing into the world of tech, venture capitalism, and angel investing. He invited Cam to private events with executives from Disney, Fox, Warner, media agencies, and startup CEOs. They even co-invested in companies. One of them was Maker Studios, which reportedly sold to Disney for $675 million. Chameleonaire was getting smarter. His friend Nelly told him about the importance of auditing the record label. So Cam hired Jay-Z's auditor to basically conduct a financial examination of the Universal and Chameleonaire joint venture. Turns out they were hiding $600,000 from him. In 2011, Cam wanted out of his deal after not being able to release his third album for two years. He told the label if they didn't end his partnership, he would teach every artist on their roster how to do an audit and find out how much money the label was withholding from them. So they let him go. To the fans, Cam was still dropping mixtapes, but to him, he was done with music. He was ready to dive into the tech world. He got his friends, Big Boy from Outkast, Trey Songs, E-40, all to get interested in this entrepreneurship world. In 2015, he became an entrepreneur in residence at a VC to immerse himself more in the tech world. Entrepreneur in residence is, there's a venture capital firm and I will go in there and sit in there every day, basically be involved in all the pitch meetings when pitching to a venture capitalist, I'll be sitting in a room just listening. He invested in Lyft before they went public. Lyft obviously became the second biggest ride sharing app to this day. He invested in Cruise, which was an autonomous vehicle company that was acquired by General Motors for over $1 billion. He invested in the doorbell company Ring, which was acquired by Amazon for over $1 billion. Chameleonaire has established himself as a savvy investor who sees the potential in companies. For the past few years, he's been working on his app Convos, which is a social video app for genuine conversations with real people. Today, Chameleonaire has invested in over 60 companies, one of them being a hot sauce company, Sienna Sauce. His portfolio is diverse, not just focused on big tech. The ironic thing about all of this, despite Google saying his net worth is $50 million and that he's probably the richest one-hit wonder of all time, he doesn't want people to get caught up in the money. He's leading by example on how to build wealth, how to play the long game. Man, I'm just listening to the, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, man, woo! And this guy's voice, person narrating this, his voice is, man, his voice just captivates you, right? His voice just captivates you, man. I've just been inside, I've just been listening. <laughs> this is interesting, man. That's why I said that the like, actual videos are going to be based on things that interest me. Sorry if people don't like it that way, or if the YouTube algorithm doesn't work for me that way. I just want to react to things that interest me. It won't be just comedy, American, the funny thing, nah. So, let's get to it. Let's go back just jump into Silicon Valley and become a multi-millionaire overnight. Since 2002, Cam has been ahead of the curve. You saw the websites he was building. You saw him on MySpace and Twitter before everyone else. 
You saw him selling ringtones, landing a joint venture, then working with Say Now. He knew Spotify was going to take over the music industry in 2010 before it was available in the United States. Cam was always focused on the future, while every other rapper was throwing money in the strip club, buying chains and cars. They are still doing that in 2022. They are stuck maintaining that lifestyle for what? Instagram followers? Look at what he wears now worth $50 million versus when he was a rapper worth just a few million. Chameleonaire didn't let the world define him as just a rapper. He got his fame, notoriety, and first fortune through music, then leveraged that to build a second career as a tech investor. Then he used his knowledge as an investor to become a founder of his own app, Convos. I'm not sure what Cam's next move will be, but I'm sure he knows it. And we probably won't find out until a decade later. <laughs> I love this, I love this, I love this rapture. <laughs> cool man. I think I'm a, I was gonna look for this guy's other some of his other videos to react to man. The guy's narrate um, narration voices. Ooh. Smooth on enchanter. Okay, I said enchanter, yeah, enchanter. I said enchanter. I show what enchanter is enchanter. Okay. <laughs> okay. Free will, subscribe, like, comment, yeah, cheers. Peace out man. Camilonia, I got me riding dirty, I got me riding dirty, it's my road.